Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the skeletal system. There are many functions of bones and your skeleton in general. First one, support. Support, without bones, you'd be a blob. You, you wouldn't have any posture, you wouldn't be able to move. Uh, your whole body just wouldn't be your body without the bones. Storage, uh, when it comes to storing stuff, your bones have a lot on their plate. Lipids. Most people don't realize this. There's actually a lot of fat contained in bones for storage purposes. You also have your blood making ability within bones. And besides that, most of the weight of bones is a lot of calcified compounds that you can release when you're running low on those things. If you're not getting quite as much through your diet, your bones can let go of some of that to help other organs. The downside is, of course, if you continue to not have enough in your diet, your bones are going to lose a lot of their density and a lot of their mass. As I mentioned a second ago, production of blood. Not just red blood cells, all of your blood cells are produced in the marrow within your bones. Protection, your skull, your rib cage, uh, the pelvic bones, there's a lot of protection going on. Um, Think about all the times you've fallen on your head. If it wasn't for your skull, you'd have brain damage. Leverage, in other words, movement. Um, your ability to push a door open, turn a knob. Uh, you have muscles pulling on bones in different ways to allow you to manipulate your environment to help whatever you gotta get done. When we look at a typical bone, there are lots of things that you need to know to understand how the bone's working. Compact bone versus spongy bone. So if we look at this cross section here, you can see that there's this term cancellous bone. That's another term for spongy bone. And you can see that when you look in here, there's lots of little holes, little spaces. It looks spongy. And these little areas of bone that are not the spaces are called trabeculae. And they're kind of like crisscrossing little units of, of bone tissue. And it actually helps reinforce them. It's kind of like a engineering. When you, when you look at how um, people are, are making buildings and they will crisscross beams to help with, with the weight distribution and to help keep that stable, it's very similar more at the ends of your bones. So here's the end of a bone. If we looked at the other end down here, you'd also see a high concentration of that spongy bone. The compact bone tends to be more on the outer rim. So you can see that where it's just pure white here, that's compact bone, much more densely compacted bone tissue. And you're gonna have that usually on the outsides. The epiphysis versus the diaphysis. So let's continue this bone drawing a little further. Let's pretend that's the other end. The epiphysis, or plural be epiphyses, would be here and here. The diaphysis is the middle portion. And so this term applies mainly to the long bones. When we look at the humerus, the femurs, or you know your, your thigh bones, uh, the diaphysis would be that middle straight region and the two ends, the epiphyses. The periosteum is a term for the outer layer of bone. And it's going to be most obvious in the section of the diaphysis. The outer layer that you're going to have uh, ligaments being attached to, uh, the part that you'd be holding if you actually had your hands around the, the diaphysis, you're touching the periosteum. The articular cartilage is articular because it's when bones articulate with respect to one another. So when you look at how a bone connects to another bone via a joint, the articular cartilage is usually going to be a nice cushion that's going to be on the ends that are touching the other bones. Lacunae. If we zoom in really, really, really close to what's going on in here, a lacuna is going to be a home for a bone cell, also called an osteocyte. So here's an osteocyte with its nucleus. The red is that chamber uh, deep within the matrix of the bone or, or the hard parts of the bone where you're going to have bone cells. Yes, there are cells in every bone of the body. They make up a very, very, very small portion of the mass of the bone because most of the bone is 
all that hard stuff, all those calcified components uh, that your cells within the bone can help produce and keep there. Canaliculi. So if we look at this lacuna, and lacunae would be plural, you have passageways that extend from this chamber. So these two little passageways, they're like canals. So the canaliculi, this is plural, are like little canals that help get nutrients to the cells of your bones, help get wastes out, help get the gases in and out. So it's like this crazy canal system. And you can see in this particular cross section, all of these little canals. And these are just major ones. There'd be even smaller canals uh, connecting all these, kind of like freeways with, you know, compared to uh, surface streets. Matrix. The bone matrix is just all that hard bone stuff. All of this in here is bone matrix. And it's mostly um, salts that would be uh, full of calcium. So calcium carbonate is a major one. Um, lots of secretions from your osteocytes, which we'll talk more about in a sec, uh, that give your bones that mass, that hardness. Osteons are kind of like these uh, circular units. Here and here, you can see there are these circular regions that have tinier concentric circles within them, those are the osteons. And that's how you have a lot of orientation within bone. You can see that we're in compact bone here, and that when we go more towards the inner part here, you're gonna have more of this uh, spongy bone, also called cancellous bone. So osteons, very common units within the structure of the compact bone. Central canal, the central canal you can see here, here, here. So within each osteon, there is a, a major thoroughfare uh, of fluid, of, of blood flow uh, to those sections. And then finally, medullary cavity. The word medulla means inner. So medullary cavity, this region within the middle here, that's hollow, is the medullary cavity. Uh, there, you're going to have a lot of bone marrow. Bone cell types. There are three major types. Osteocytes, one of them is pictured below, are mature bone cells. As an adult, your osteocytes help maintain your bone density, uh, keep the bone what it is. If it wasn't for osteocytes, your bones would just degrade and degrade and degrade. So keeping up that bone density uh, without osteocytes, it wouldn't happen. Osteoblasts and osteoclasts are kind of like exact opposites. Osteoblasts help make bone. Osteoclasts get rid of bone. Osteoblasts are going to be most active when your bones are growing. You know, from being an embryo to being a baby to being an adolescent and so on. Osteoblasts are gonna be very active. So they're actively secreting bone matrix tissue. Um, their development and their um, help in allowing your bones grow, it's gonna start out as, as cartilage when you're a baby, but as time goes on, that bone matures and becomes harder as it grows. If you have a fracture, uh, for instance, I broke my collarbone, when I broke my collarbone, the osteoblasts, they went into overdrive. They help secrete more of that bone matrix tissue, helping connect those two separated parts. And it actually grew around. So my collarbone is actually a little bit thicker now uh, than it was before I broke my collarbone. Uh, thanks to osteoblasts, they helped bring it back together as a full-fledged connected bone and reinforced it in the process. Osteoclasts secrete chemicals, usually acids, that help wear away bone and get rid of bone. And you might wonder, why, why would we need that? One example is, if you remember the previous slide with the medullary cavity, you've got a section in the middle that's completely hollow. How did it get that way? Osteoclasts. Also, spongy bone. How does spongy bone get those little holes in it? Osteoclasts. And also, when it comes to my collarbone, since I broke it about 15 years ago, it's not quite as, as bulging or bumpy as it used to be. It has 
smoothed out a little bit. And that's thanks to osteoclasts. They will actually wear away uh, bone that you don't need. If there's more than you need in an area, you can gradually have osteoclasts wearing it away. When we look at bone movement in terms of you moving a body part, you can relate it to physics. There's a fulcrum, there's resistance, and there's some kind of force that you're applying. The fulcrum is that point with which this, this lever is actually working. That's your joints. So let's take um, your humerus and your ulna radius. These are the two uh, forearm bones. If I want to lift something like this, like let's say, you know, I'm doing bicep curls. My fulcrum would be here. It would be the joint. Resistance is, well, if I'm just lifting my arm, there's not very much resistance, but let's say there is a heavy weight in my hand. That's the resistance. That's the load that we're trying to move up. The force comes from the muscles. So when I have my bicep pulling on these bones here, I am now exceeding the, the load here and bringing it up. So whatever movement you're making with bones, you can relate it with muscles to how a lever works. Factors affecting bone growth. There are three major ones. Nutrition, of course it comes into play. Uh, the amount of calcium you take in, uh, the amount of vitamin D in your diet. Um, also, vitamin D, you can make some of that in your skin from the UV radiation. That's why they say, get some sunlight, get some vitamin D. If you're wondering, well, how does vitamin D relate to it? You can drink and consume all the calcium that your, heart's de that your heart desires, but if you do not have sufficient vitamin D, you're not going to be able to absorb that calcium into your body as it goes through your digestive tract. So without vitamin D, you're not going to get the calcium you need. Uh, nutrition, very important in maintaining uh, your bones and affecting how your bones grow. Um, not enough vitamin D uh, can lead to something like rickets. Rickets is where your bones don't grow properly, your joints get messed up, and oftentimes you'll find people being bow-legged uh, because they didn't get those nutrients as they were developing. Hormones. Uh, bone growth is going to be related to hormones, of course. Growth hormone, or abbreviated as GH from your pituitary gland, is going to be one of the ones that are going to affect that. I have this picture here because this gentleman is Robert Wadlow. Uh, he has the world record for being the tallest man in, in recorded history. He was almost nine feet tall. Now, he had a tumor in his pituitary gland that caused it to be overactive. He was releasing way too much growth hormone from a, a small age, from a very small baby all the way up to uh, his early 20s when he passed away. Uh, so he really never stopped growing. That's abnormal, of course. Uh, your pituitary gland regulates how much uh, growth hormone is actually going to be coming out of it. And when you're my age, you're not going to need as much of that because you're full uh, grown. Exercise. If you don't get enough exercise, you're not going to have your bones grow to their full potential. So if your mom tells you, go outside and run around a bit, take her advice. Uh, studies have shown that as muscles move and as they pull on bone, that can actually stimulate some more mitosis within those growing parts of the bone uh, near the epiphyseal plates, if you look at an x-ray. And you can have your bones growing a little bit more. So if you want to reach your full height, eat well, exercise a lot, and you'll get to the height that your body was meant to get to. When we look deep inside bones, you have bone marrow. And there are two main kinds. The red marrow looks red, and you can see that from this picture. That's where you're going to have the production of blood cells. Your red blood cells are being made every second of your life in the red marrow. It tends to be more concentrated in the spongy bone, and you can actually see that in this drawing here, the little redness in the spaces of the spongy bone. You would also see it down here. And, and you can have some, some overlap. You can have some of it in the medullary cavity. But the reason why I'm showing you this picture, uh, this is the head of a femur, the head of your uh, thigh bone looking down. They actually removed part of the periosteum, and they're looking in there to show you a little spot of yellow. And you can see that the yellow marrow, it tends to be more concentrated in, in this region. 
in the medullary cavity. It's yellow because of lipids. You have a lot of fat storage in the medullary cavity uh, of your bones, especially a large bone like the femur, like the humerus, uh, some of the biggest bones in your body. And now for some bone conditions and disorders. So the big one is fractures. Same thing as a bone break. There's lots of different kinds of fractures. Uh, here's one here in this particular x-ray image. This is the tibia, the main shin bone, and this is the fibula um, off to the lateral uh, uh, side, the lateral end. This is the medial part. So you can see down here, there is a little fracture that has happened. Um, this can be called a spiral fracture, um, meaning that it broke and, and did a slight twist. Um, depending on how bad this is, you may need to go in as a surgeon, uh, an orthopedic surgeon or what have you, and put in a metal rod into the medullary cavity, um, the, the space within the bone, to help stabilize it and encourage uh, the correct formation uh, in terms of um, ossification, which is the process of making bone tissue. There are lots of other kinds of fractures. A hairline fracture uh, could be just like this. Like It just looks like a crack where the bone has not moved at all. And that's one of the easiest ones uh, to repair. A green stick fracture will just look like this, like a little, little kind of crack in it. Those typically heal uh, much more easily than something like a spiral fracture. Another one is called a comminuted fracture. That's if like the bone looked shattered in terms of like it being a lot of different pieces. Uh, and that's a more significant kind of fracture, especially in a major bone like this. Um, depending on how severe the fracture is, you might be wearing a cast for a lot longer. Um, depending on you know what bone it's, it's in, uh, that's going to affect your prognosis in terms of how long it's going to take for it to develop. And like I mentioned earlier with um, you know making bone, um, like with my particular uh, left collarbone, uh, this clavicle still has a slight bump. Um, so you're going to have making of bone tissue wrapping around this, uh, typically. Osteopenia is a reduced amount of um, bone hardness. It's much more common in uh, middle-aged women, but it also can happen in men. So osteopenia is a sign that you may be eventually moving on to osteoporosis. So osteopenia, if you were to take a uh, uh, some kind of test um, to measure your bone density in terms of how much hardness your bones have, if it's lower than it should be, they'll diagnose you with this and they'll encourage you uh, in your diet to get a lot more calcium, especially in your diet, uh, and remain active uh, to encourage your bones to get um, more hard. If osteopenia is not dealt with, eventually you can get osteoporosis and it's much harder uh, to get back that bone density when you have osteoporosis. It means your bones are way too porous. And it's much more likely that you're going to get a fracture, that you're going to get bone breaks when you fall and you have osteoporosis. Um, so a lot of um, middle-aged women especially or um, you know, younger senior, senior citizens are encouraged to take calcium supplements and get calcium uh, in their diet naturally to avoid getting either of these. This long word here, osteochondrodysplasia, is a fancy term for, it's kind of an umbrella term, uh, a fancy term for different types of bone and cartilage developmental disorders in terms of how it forms in the body. So there are lots of different forms of this uh, in terms of inadequate cartilage production, inadequate bone development. Uh, speaking of inadequate bone development, rickets is a very strange disorder that can happen if a younger person, if a child, is not getting enough uh, calcium absorbed into their body. So a lack of vitamin D could actually affect the ability to get calcium absorbed into the bloodstream and to bones. And rickets, if, if you have this severely, one of the signs of it is that uh, bones, especially the ones in your legs, will get curvy. And the person will actually look bow-legged when they stand up straight. Their legs are not straight. They actually kind of look like this. And an x-ray would, would reveal um, that odd bone development. Um, and that's due to lack of calcium absorption early on in the development of their skeletal system. Thanks for watching educator.com.